Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is The Press. We're reaching you live from Kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. Now we'll move to analyzing the stories that we read out to you earlier. And this is a reminder that our phone lines are open. You can call in to make your contributions or ask your questions. But remember, it is one minute to every caller. My guest on the show today is Aziz Fatai Adeshokon, who is a journalist. Great to have you on the show today, sir. Uh, thanks for having me. Have a good morning. Good morning to you. All right, like like somebody will actually say, I feel like saying, okay, good morning, but really, <laughs> is the morning really good? Because in Nigeria, a lot is really happening. A lot is happening. Uh, yes, from the point, a lot is happening in our country. Mm. May God heal our land. Mm. Most definitely. <laughs> all right, see the um, Nigerian Tribune. Okay, all the whole papers has the same story. Let's see how we can actually um, bring down um, some of these um, headlines in the next few minutes that we have. Nigerian Tribune says, hope rises for state police, federal government, and governors work on modalities for its realization. Direct NSA, uh, DSS, DG, IGP to go after food hoarders. They say no to food importation. Agree on increased number or increased number of food rangers. Looks like if you ask me like a tall order <laughs> what are your thoughts in this because now they're saying all of a sudden we're giving thumbs up to state police because mm -hmm. i remember how much the former president said no state police because mm -hmm. um state governors will definitely use them at, as their own, at their own whims and caprices mm -hmm. and now we're saying yes to state police but on the flip side talking about um food hoarders i'm sure you must have seen that video from the niger state governor of course and uh, so if they're saying they want to clamp down on food hoarders are they also talking about that state governor too uh, you see um is a cumbersome episode and um i don't want to lament how we got here how can we get out of, uh, get out of this quagmire it's no longer a cherry news mm. when you are seeing what is happening in our country and um, God forbid, but in Nigeria will not turn to Somalia or Venezuela. Venezuela. Uh, mm. it's, not, it's, not, it's not something encouraging at all. If you are talking about state police, uh, state policing is way to go. Mm. And um, some of us have been clamoring for this for over 20 years. Um, the, the reservation by former President Muhammad Buhari, His Excellency, uh, that um, state governors will now be using it on opposition in the states. No. If you look at, the, if you weigh your options, the, the, the benefit in state policing actually outweighs um, perceive or alleged um, state governors that will be using. If you are not committing any offense, mm. the law court is there. A state mm. governor cannot say, oh, they shall come because he doesn't like my face. Like he, your face. No, no, mm. no. It's not getting, that way. Uh, and it's you, you, Because we have gotten to that stage now that state policing is the way to go and state policing in quote community policing okay if if i'm a deshoko i'm from oyo state mm. i'm from particular local government in oyo state in shaki if i'm interested in becoming a police officer if i'm in that my neighborhood i speak the language mm. i speak the community mm. and the 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 the, the, the nook and crannies you can always actually know what is going on there so mm. and the information will be actually be closer mm. know that somebody will now be waiting from directors from abuja how many detectives, how many team, crack team, would IG constitute and send over? Nigeria is too big for, for central policing. In the U.S., the California police are there. If you go to New York, they have their own. But we have the, the federal police, the FBI. Mm. So when there are issues of um, intelligence, they go back to the FBI. So, so of, of essence to us now is community policing and come back to the, the cross of the matter. Food. Food is very, very important bag of rice only god knows how much is mm. bag of rice now mm. and I, I hear seventy-seven thousand, eighty thousand. Yes, it's over seventy thousand mm. now and we saw it happening we saw it coming because we saw it happening year by the years but government failed to do nothing that's the truth successive governments Muhammad Buhari government jonathan's government because we are not planning in this country but then if you remember jonathan's government i think we're buying it for eight thousand naira but now it's at eighty thousand so even at that time where, where did the, uh, even at that time that we we're buying for eight thousand naira see the problem we had was the subsidy of a thing nigeria is actually struggling i mean i mean i mean squeezing the the financial system of, of our country and we, we are now piling up our problems piling up our problems and no thanks to this immediate regime if you are going to face out subsidy it has to it, it can be holistic in that approach mm -hmm. we have electricity we have gas we have petrol so what are we now talking about and this petrol is central to our economy mm -hmm. now, at the same time the federal government is now floating the naira naira sir, today is about 1500 naira you cannot combine all some and i cannot be telling my children because oh i'm building a house for you in, in katampe 
or in Asokoro, there That's is no food. Country. There is no food in this house in the next <laughs> two years because mm. I'm actually building uh, the future. Uh, your future. Mm. In future, in what sense? I'm building a house in Maitama. Then my children will not, will not be, they'll be lacking in school. They'll be lacking in welfare. Mm. It's not tenable. We cannot all die before you say you are building Nigerian economy for us. You, you know for IMF policy. Mm. You have to do own grown solution. That's the truth. That's the truth. I can't get to Emo State, Abba now. I want to pass message. Uh, and I, I started speaking British accent English. Where you can communicate with the, with the locals. In Emo language. I can't go to Kaduna or Zaria or I'm in Kano. You are, now, you are now speaking Chinese to the people. Mm. That is exactly the picture of the economy being painted right now. They are not speaking the local economy language Nigeria understand. We can't continue like this. So, so let me ask you, sorry I have to put in there, does it actually mean with all of these policies that they've reeled out, now they have this one bringing in the DSS to go against food hoarders, <laughs> they have state police, they have uh, of, uh, forest rangers, mm -hmm. and with all the monies that they've um, borrowed, whether from a Frexin bank to cushion the effect of the, uh, the increase in the, from, uh, the, the discrepancy between the dollar and the naira, does it mean that is all trial and error, or we're just putting our hands on way too much, but yet we are not able to catch one. Um, thank you very much, Annabelle. Uh, to me, I will agree with you, it's just trial and error. And um, I'm not too impressed with the statements coming out yesterday. If you are saying you are not going to be importing food, where are the food in the country? The stop guard measure in the next six months, we should be importing rice. And there should be reduction in price of rice. If you are protecting these local farmers, bag of rice local made, locally made rice how much is the bag mm. it's over sixty thousand. it doesn't make any sense if i'm if you, if you are encouraging me to wear making nigerian wear and overseas wear is hundred thousand and nigerian wear is eighty thousand where is the lo locally made incentive mm. it's no longer there the, the problem i knew what we had was yes we are not refining this crude no serious country does that we can't continue to be living on ad hoc economic arrangements it's not tenable that's the truth. It's just like I'm out of job. I'm now borrowing money for you from you to feed the family. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the problem continues piling up. Mm -hmm. I have to look for a job. If the security guard is a driving job, you have to look for a job to augment what, you, what is required of you as a father. Mm -hmm. So there is um, NSA committee. We are, too, we are too fond of committees in our country. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, what I expected was at the meeting with the governors, it has to be a kind of decisive, a stopgap measure. In the next six months window, we are going to be importing rice, importing fuel. So by so doing, in six months time, this window will close. We have to open our borders. Mm. You see, it's like, it's like these people at the villa or in government houses, they don't know what we are, the boat we are bearing. They don't know what the Nigerians are facing. They that, don't know. So that, that's the reason why you have um, the Sultan um, and the Emir of Kano yes. asking um, the first lady to go and tell her husband. Is it doesn't mean that he actually doesn't know. Of, you see, let me tell you something. There is even between you know or feeling the pulse of the people. If you know what is going on in the streets, when an average family man is begging you for 5000 or 10000 mm. and he doesn't mind anything at all out of that 10000 naira. He speak volume. Yes, we are not saying Nigeria will turn to America. They have their own challenges over there. Mm. Our own challenges is peculiar. It is own grown challenges. How can a serious country with abundance of crude refining petroleum products abroad? It doesn't make any economic sense. It's just like we are in the studio here and we are expecting our partner to come from an Ambra state or Emo <laughs> state. Mm. Do you know how much that will cost us to get a wrap of pounded yam? So it doesn't make any economic sense. And the government of the day, why I have problem with President Tinobu regime is they are busy to make money for government. Oh, of make course, money for government. Of course, removal of subsidy actually made some certain money available to government, and this money are now being shared with the state government governors. Every state governor now have more revenue than before. But where are this money? So anything that is outside the central economy, we can't continue to be distributing palliatives, distributing rice. I have parents. My aged mother cannot be giving me food to eat now. He has given me a, a, a kind of holistic approach, sent to school, empowered. For how long will she be giving me food to feed my family, my wife, my children? It's not, that's just, so, so you see that as a quick fix? Of course. It's, it's, government is not serious yet. They are not serious. I'm saying this emphatically. Mr. President should rev review and revisit his, his opinion. They should import rice for us that the border should be open either from taiwan or for anything 
the border should be open. We can no longer sustain bag of rice for over 70,000 naira. It doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is a popular meal for Nigerians. Mm -hmm. a staple food. So, so, what is the essence of governance? In the Greek Empire, when governance was actually introduced, is to protect lives and property, provide welfare for the people. So, where is welfare? Every, the burden of government is now being pushed to the people. We buy for, uh, for 700, not even 700 in Abuja, 670. I don't want to mention the filling station. 670, I bought this morning. I bought 30 liters this morning at 670 naira rate here in Abuja. Mm. So, where, where do you go from there? And that's just for fuel, though. For fuel. That will not even last you the whole. Not at all. We don't believe it. It's, it's off. Mm. By the time you move to Metama, Jabi, go to Bega, go back to Law School in Buari, come back to Katampe, oh. the friend is gone. Mm. So, would I be spending 120,000, 130,000 on fuel in a month? I've not serviced the car, I've not changed the tires. Mm. Then, what about my personal welfare? And government is there doing nothing for us. It's no longer tenable. Mr. President, we are not saying you created a general problem. We are saying, even you told us that we should not pity you, you apply for the job. Mm. That means you knew what was on ground. The CBA got with all due respect. I've not seen any significance policy so far from him isn't it too early to it's not too to early see it can't it, it's a guess approach see I, i'm closer to these people i can pay for this government because i actually believed in tinubu kandecho you understand so are you are you do you feel disappointed of course in the last eight months we are not saying the problem should be solved by now but in the last eight months, there's no sense of hope it's, uh -huh. it's just like you are so your hope is not renewed yet of course ah uh -huh. You see, you, you secure admission to university, University of Captain TV. Mm. You are under level, no first semester exam, let alone second semester exam. So there is no hope that you are promoting to 200 level. Mm. But you have done your first semester exams, second semester exams. You don't mind spending another three years in Captain TV University because your hope mm. is actually anchored positively. But our hope is not anchored positively. We are not saying bag of a dollar should go to 100. Dollars. No. If you are seeing significance of all, the, of all these policies, so there is no crime. Mr. President needs to review. Okay, let me ask you. Uh, so most, some people would actually say that um, it could be that m especially most of um, our political officials or most of um, those who come in, co what, politicians, that they don't know, they don't really know the crux of the matter until they begin to wear <laughs> the shoe. But then I always say that President Bola Ametinubo has been there, done that. He's not new in the game. So definitely he knows what it is. So, but most people just say that he just only went there and saw that it, it, it was it's overwhelming do you agree to that not at all um, that is a kind of an um an obsolete perception that oh this is when you get to the office you now know the pulse the, the damage done so far no it's a lie it's a lie see it depends on your own approach you just like playing the football as a president you have everything at your disposal excuse me you are the commander in chief of armed forces like yesterday what i expected was not what was dished out you cannot tell us you do, there is no importation. So mm -hmm. where is the food in the country? We are battling with insurgency. Our people could not go to farms. In Benue Plateau, the people are predominantly farmers in the Algerian communities. We've seen attack here and there. Headsmen, um, farmers clashes. You are not putting security in, in, in the rural areas. Go to the north. They can no longer farm. But no axis, no way to go. Yobe, no way to go. So, and pocket of violence here and there so the, the solution is for six months or for one year let us import we expand scope of this um, production so by so doing the next 12 months you have a proper plan you can't be saying setting up committee holding of food who are you going to did you give me food to, for me not to hold who are you going to so the committee will leave abuja go to niger from niger go to Imo. From NBC, in Imo Selo, from NBC to Okigwe, do you know the kilometers? Mm -hmm. From Okigwe to Oro, do you know the kilometers? Mm. Then from there, you go to Abia. Then from Kano, you are leaving Kano now to Jigawa, Hadeja, you'll be in Hadeja. Which, how many of the, which community, how many of the people who actually feel the pulse of these committees? You see, mm. we are tired of this rhetoric. It's just like a kind of um, a drama that I saw yesterday in the villa. Mm. The, you see, it has not addressed anything so far so far you see we need to tell ourselves the truth we can't be fooling ourselves 
you've done some policy so far in the last 18 months, no impact. You review your policy. You just like a football coach playing a tactical formation and it's not yielding results. You have to change it. Sometimes keep out of the team are being substituted. Mm. Oh, come, let's Annabelle go in. Okay, additional, please come and rest. Annabelle, go in. They will get results. You've seen so far in, in football matches that the, the new entrance will actually deliver the goal. Mm. Obviously, is winning team. Mm. We are not saying either Annabelle scored or or Adishok scored. So now I will not lie to you. I've not seen any renewed hope oh. for now. Because oh. it has been guest approach so far. Mm. See, it's not rocket science. It's not actually because I'm outside government. No. It's not rocket science. You can't be developing policy that are anti people and you expect results. It's not done that way. All right. The IMF policy is anti people policy. Mm. You, you have to go to you have to go grow local economy. Local economy, all these English, all these German being blown at CBN government. I saw them at the Senate. When the Senate invited the uh, Cardoso, Wally Jones, and what have you. They are not they are not they are not, imp they are not impressive. They are not impressive. They don't know what they are saying, saying. They don't know. I'm saying this live on TV. The Minister of Finance, they don't know what they are doing. They don't know. If you know, when Sanusi was CBN governor, he knew there was a problem ahead. And he started with the president. Okonjo well also knew there was a problem ahead. And they developed strategy that this subsidy has to go. Nigeria should pay one ten. Just for we to but we never believe in government upon government in this country. They will always be failing us. And we actually voted campaign against Jonathan uh, subsidy subsidy remover. Mm -hmm. Now we are all paying the prices. Yeah. So as coordinating minister of economy, I expected Kabe uh, Wale, Wale to mm -hmm. have seen far ahead. All right. And implement a, a policy Let's quickly that will be pro people policy. Let's quickly take this call before we go ahead. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Are you there? Okay. All right. So please, if you call, ensure that you turn down the volume of your TV set and um, uh, one minute to every caller. All right. Before we leave that particular headline, there's th that particular um, uh, uh, question I asked. I wanted us to raise. Mm. You called in all the governors to a committee, yes. but then one out of your governor is saying that we are not going. As he made it public, <laughs> that we are not going to send food to anybody. <laughs> so are you going to start from that place, or you just turn a blind eye and pretend that you, you didn't see or hear what he said? Uh, you, you see, you see, the judge is becoming a kind of um, super story. And um, so it's not um, something cherry. When you see, like I was saying earlier, it's just um, the meeting yesterday was more of a drama, a window dressing, mm -hmm. just for we to feel as if oh, government is actually working. I'm a journalist, and I'm a street person. I was born and brought up in Lagos, and I know what is going on, what is obtainable on the streets. It's not somebody that will just sit in the studio and be blowing grammar off records. It's not, you see, all these things that they start together yesterday, it won't work. Annabelle, I, in the next four weeks, I'll come back to the studio. We'll debate it again that so far, the last one month, the resolution passed by the governor and the president. Mm. What has he needed? It will not need anything. Mm. The bottom line is, you see, I don't like lamentation or attacking government. No, I'm actually providing solution. Who knows if Mr. President, any of his aides, um, in Gilale, um, the Idris, the Minister for if they can actually borrow from my message we should open for importation we are in crisis we are in food crisis open for importation then we reduce the tariff at the port entry because dollar is, is actually on the high side you are killing the economy there is a lot of enterprises that have been killed people are now out of job out of are business out yes so i don't know i don't know you are now sitting down putting on suit before the senate blowing grammar it's, it's not easy. You are just wasting our times. God forbid. I don't want to be a pessimist. I believe things will turn around if, if, underline, if they actually review those policies. All right. Let's go to other stories. Um, still on the National Daily, we, I, I was, there's a particular story I was trying to pick out, but I'll find it um, later on. Okay, okay. Because you talked about um, um, uh, tariffs. This one on Daily Sun says again CBN raises customs exchange rate to one thousand and fifteen naira <laughs> ninety two cobble. <laughs> Please, what do you want the those people import importing? Or you how see, do you want them to deal? You see, like I painted earlier, on, I made mention of the CBN governor in particular, um, Cardoso. He's not doing well. 
and uh, if you're listening or watching me either after the program you should actually sit up it's not doing well you see you can't be busy making money for government where you are pushing people out of businesses it's also, it doesn't make any economic sense it is when people earn more it's when businesses are thriving i'll give you a practical example when fashola became governor of legal, legal state in 2007 Oshodi was, Oshodi was no go area. Mm. So by, by 2008, October, they actually opened up Oshodi, cleaned up Oshodi. The market women in Oshodi, Lagos, they were willing, pay as well, they were paying taxes on their own. Mm. Check the record if I'm lying. In Lagos in 2008, because they've seen government of Fashola right. at that time to have done well to enhance their businesses in Oshodi. Osho there was no go area. Mm. They are linking a papa, linking motion, linking anywhere. You, can, you cannot go to Osho, go to that Osho that route. Mm. Immediately from Bola there last, you cannot enter ah. Osho again. Mm. But relate. a governor came and make the difference. Even though, during the military era, Marua or you know, they could not do it. But a civilian governor came and he started discipline on Osho the route. Everything became fine. So if government of Tinubu actually serious about improving the lives and welfare of the people, you have to come local. You have to come. You can't continue increasing tariff at the port. Mm. Who is buying cars now? Ah, who is buying cars? <laughs> let's Nigerian quickly... used car is now is now most expensive. Let, to let, let's, let's quickly take this call before we go ahead. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Are you there? All right. I think we should just. That's a good place to leave that um, uh, headline <laughs> and move to another headline. Quite a number of things to talk about, but then our time is uh, just running uh, immediately. All right, so you have, um, is this another story I was reading? Oh, first is T uh, Nigerian News Direct says, Tinubu reappoints NAVDAC DG, PCN um, CEO and others to health in health sector. <laughs> but then that's not even the, the crux of the matter. Yeah. What I was actually looking at is the fact that a um, few weeks ago, a few days ago, yeah. the NAV NAVDAC, uh, NAVDAC came out to say that they are banning sachet drinks. Yes. Or those ones. Alcoholic uh, sachet. Uh, yeah. Alcoholic sachet drink, the Chelsea, Seaman yes. and all of that. And then up until now, you still have so many um, hue and cry, so many brows, <laughs> people shouting on and off social media that this is something that some people just use to find their their breathing space not some people most people yes used to find their breathing space yes. like i can't afford the big bottle <laughs> this is the one i can afford at least just to get my mental health immediately for the now and now they're taking it off what is the alternative and i actually saw another headline saying that um, the re uh, refs they are thinking of um banning sports betting the baba Ijebu's, the sports bets <laughs> so is there an alternative if you are removing all of this because the ripple effect is going to be humongous if you ask me i, I think um the conversation going on in the presidency um is not uniform and um they are not talking to themselves and um i don't know in which um a navdak dg with all due respect professor the prof in charge professor lao yeah i've forgotten her name now uh, our husband used to be a professor and um also a member of the senate Adeyeye, Professor Adeyeye, and um, I don't think um, there should be a kind of um, discussion between her and the uh, Council of States. You can't just come up with policy at this time of our country that we are going through economic problems. And um, because you can't just institute what is not tenable. The uh, essence of government is to provide succor for the people. They are there for us. They are not doing us favor. We voted them in power. They actually campaign. They wanted this job and they got it mm. and it is our right to actually say no you have to govern us well like um, this man that sang the song um, african china if you are the president lead us well mm. if you are a governor govern, govern us, us well. well if you are a police police well well no they take bribe <laughs> it, it, it could be comical it could be mm. music but it's actually passing message. the message sure. that we can't continue this way as a president you have to lead us well you are a president we all agreed what are you doing for us it's not your personal money. It's not your personal resources. It's not a private enterprise. If you're a governor, governors should come up and free the purse of the people for once and for all. So, it, so telling us you are banning such a ban, on, on, on what premise are you doing so? What what are they constituting? Those sachet, are, are, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. What are they constituting? So it's just like some people just come when they think other side from their, they wake from the other side of their bed, they just come with any policy. Because... I see we are in Banana Republic. Mm. So I'm just telling you, the CBN in particular, they have to work. What CBN is even monitoring? If now that is banning 
largest sector of your economy mm. where you have these people paying taxes and whatever. So you are not even talking to have that. So it's, uh. it's as if CBN, like I painted up, the CBN is central in our economy. Monetary policy, fiscal policy, is not monitoring anything. I mean, Cardoso, I don't like going personal, but if you are given an opportunity you have, and you are not performing, you, if you cannot bear the heat of the kitchen, get out of the kitchen. So we all condemn or may feel like, or may feel like, I gone. He's facing trial. What is happening at CBN again? Time, trial and error. You can't be doing guest approach to economy, life of the people. We entrusted you people in governance. So we, we can't continue like this. That's the truth. The bottom line is, Mr. President, I'm not even talking about election winner. You have won election. Supreme Court has affirmed you. You have to do the needful. Okay, just the economy is not fine. Just because you're talking about um, the CBN um, governor, the nation newspaper says banks induce customers to convert dollar ac uh, in account to Naira. So if they, they come and meet you and then ask you that, is that your domiciliary account, turn it to Naira. I, Mr. Yeah. Dishok, are you going to agree? It's, uh, not at all. You see, um, I think you see many cases in court. You, can, you cannot compel me mm. how to spend my money. And um, you cannot come with a policy that is satanic. It's not even law. It's policy. Are you saying this uh, policy is dooms? You see, Spelling you, doomsday? You see, let me tell you something. You see, you cannot, you see, you cannot say because people are having dollars in their accounts, people are having this in their accounts. So if I'm not saving dollars, I can as well actually keep that dollars in at all. Mm. So, but I'm p placing this money in bank so that bank can make use of it to lend money to what have you. Then you are not, if you don't know what to do as CBN governor, you have to find another job. It is in our client that you don't resign. You can easily resign that I'm overwhelmed with this task of office. You see, do you know the problem? The government failed to grow local economy policy. You can't just be sitting, you, you can't be an, an, a, a governor in a state. You can't be a governor in Kano state and you, you are telling your people you are not going to speak Hausa language to your people. Hmm. You can't be a governor in Enugu, you are not going to speak Igbo language. You have to speak our language economically. So what are we doing? Look at this importation of fuel. The CBN can actually help these marketers. You are not going to give them dollars. Where are they paying to? And I believe, I believe I'm making sense. Mm. Where are they paying to? You are now leaving these marketers to be struggling for dollars. For mm. So they are landing costs. That's the problem. But at CBN, you can as well come in, stop that measure, make these dollars available for these people, pay on their behalf. They bring these products in because Nigerian government has failed to find these products locally. Mm. So by the time you are paying for them, they will not be strong to look for dollars and this fuel of a thing will not go for 600. It's killing. Mm. That's where we are getting it. It's killing. People cannot move farm produce. You are talking about food. You are not importing. Where is the food? Just where is the food? If you have abundance, we will not, we will not be buying for 70,000 naira. Mm. Now 75,000 naira. So how much is the salary? How much are we earning? Annabelle, we need to stop all this ad hoc economic arrangement. We need to face the reality. All right. Nigeria is in crisis, economic crisis. Mr. President, what you said yesterday is actually an opinion. That opinion should be reviewed. You have to import food. There is no abundance of food. I wouldn't know information at Mr. President's disposal. But I'm telling you, with, through this media, there is no abundance of food in the country. Open our borders. Pending the time, Nigeria will get herself very well on the track. All right, let's move to other matters. Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger confirm plan to form new confederation. What are your thoughts on this? Before you take your um, <laughs> report, let's quickly take this call. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, Ananda. Good morning. I came from Lagos. Good to hear from you today. Yeah, it's, it's, yes, I came from Lagos. Uh, hello to my brother there, uh, the analyst there. You know, uh, from our side, uh, we are the kind of people that always say the truth. We don't, one thing, we don't know how to hide uh, the truth. And that is how it is. Uh, before the election, if you follow the pattern of our campaign, because we believe in Mr. President and we know what he did previously, we campaign aggressively in his support. And, uh, and we cannot even shy away again at this moment if we have seen things that are going on. I'm sorry, that is Yoruba for you. We don't know how to hide things. So at the moment now, 
Mr. President, I hope he's listening everywhere. The truth of the matter is that, number one, when this subsidiary uh, stock was to be removed, we all supported it, but there was a reason for supporting it. The reason is that if it is removed, the money that was paid as for the subsidy will be used to support the economic in different areas of the economic sector, like the college order education, what have you. Okay? So, but there is no any aspect of it that you can feel that this thing has been used for it. It's more or less like encouraging the corruption the more. So that is why the other time I was even saying, if that is the case, you cannot go forward. The best thing is that to revert back that subsidy. Let's be paying the first subsidy. And let the price of the oil get back to where it is. Somebody may say I'm not reasoning, but the fact is that why is the government there? If they are saying people are smuggling the oil out, uh, the crude oil out or oil out of the country, that's why they want to remove the subsidy. No. Why are they government? They should be able to prevent that smuggling. You understand? Right. But uh, let me cut the short. The thing, the truth of the matter now is that um, I understand with the analyst here, Mr. Cardoso has come to meet something that is so terrible. <laughs> very, very terrible. And probably maybe he is unthinking, maybe the hardest way is going to follow. Unfortunately, he might be doing the right thing, but I don't think Nigerians will take that station. All right. Yes, the reason why Nigeria will not take that station is that the so-called our representatives they never sacrifice anything. <laughs> they are okay. All right, okay. Now to let you go. Their account. Yes, I want. I want to hang out now. Okay, and the only previous time they always assign everything to themselves. So who is serving who? So Mr. President should wake up. We like him, but the patient will go out of hand. That is just the fact. Thank well, you so much. God bless Nigeria. Go ahead, him. Go ahead, all of us. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. I came from Lagos. Great to hear from you. All right, let's quickly take on that um, headline. It says uh, Mali, Burkina Faso to form their own confederation. Uh, yes, it's a sign of um, things fall apart. Ah. Like China Achebe said in his mm. book. The center and, uh, cannot hold it. Anymore. Yes, and things fall apart. And uh, we never managed the crisis very well. When there was coup in Niger, and there was coup in Burkina Faso, and um, the approach of government, the presidency at that time, you could see it was actually on the high side. You see, yeah, there are people, they have surveying, they are surveying nation. They can decide who to govern them. But in terms of um, United Nations Charter, they said that we have to go back to democracy. But if we look at C-type syndrome in Africa, somebody will be in government for 17 years, 20 years, 24 mm. years. It's not so in our country. Mm. The highest you can have in the last 25 years is 8 years. Does that make us lucky? It's not like it make us lucky. It makes us um, explosion matters. Uh, Nigeria are intellectuals. Okay. We cannot tolerate a president that will sit like, uh, like Gaddafi. Mm. Yes, Abacha wanted to, but we all campaigned against it. And um, God did this in his own miraculous way. That's why you cannot situate, uh, you cannot like, dissociate Nigerians and prayers. That's all. So, uh, the, the situation in Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger, to me, uh, is nothing to worry about. But the point is, um, the same thing that these people came for to correct, they are going to do that. Ah. Yes, and um, because you cannot trust the khaki men, the military regime. I'm here in the studio comfortably engaging the government, criticizing the government because we are in democracy. Mm. Uh, democracy is for the people, by the people. Um, but you cannot do so under the military <coughs> regime. Uh, in Burkina Faso, in Niger, they cannot guarantee fundamental human rights. And that is cross of the matter. And they, they too well, well, to, um, well, actually wants to stay on in the on power. That, oh, we have to stay on here because power absolutely corrupts. Mm, so, I agree. Okay, to other matters. Daily Trust says parliamentary system best for Nigeria coming from <laughs> Dan Tata. All of a sudden, is it, is it 60 um, Senate uh, leaders decided to put their thumbs up and say, okay, with all of the um, constitution review, let's go for. Uh, parliamentary system of government this presidential system is way too expensive and i ask the, are, the clock the, just removed out of our eyes all of a sudden who are those people spending the money that is becoming expensive they don't know what they are doing with all due respect i'll become a parliamentarian someday and um but i don't think they know what they are saying if you want to go into you see people need to weigh pros and cons at this time of age you want to go back to parliamentary system of government so somebody in emo we actually collapse their government and go back to Enugu to go and be taking 
somebody in Ogun State will now collapse their structure, go back to Ibadan to be taking response. So Kano State Governor, as big as Kano is, mm. the commerce and everything will collapse their government and go to Kaduna for parliamentary system of government. I don't know what, what, what they are thinking. Does somebody again in the northeast will leave uh, Gombe will leave their place, will Bauchi will leave, they will go back to Yola or go back to where see, we need to be sincere with ourselves. The presidential system of government is not working. Who are those not making it working? Mm. Are we Nigerians or the legislature themselves or the executive or the judiciary? See, now you see, it, it has to be top bottom. What they are doing there, they are not doing for people. How do you how do you reconcile 160 million jeep for an individual that won election to go and represent the people? How do you reconcile that? So yeah. parliamentary or government will not come and solve any problem. What we need is devolution of powers. Ah, devolution this, of powers. Yes, let's, the let's, center let's, is let's, too is too powerful. Let's, it's, let's it's peg too, it there. Powerful. Let's peg it there and quickly take this call. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you, sir. Tell us anymore where you're us from. My name is Ojo Michael from Abuja. Ojo Michael from Abuja, you have 60 seconds. Go ahead. You see, well, what they are talking about the presidential, I mean, parliamentary, you understand? What we're supposed to do is to remove a lot of money from these people, their salaries, and everything should be reduced. If possible, let's allow those positions to be on. Uh, on part time basis, where when you when you come for sitting, you pay. It. You understand that constituency project is hell of money, and most of them are not doing it. Let's make it a kind of part time system where you pay them per sitting. Yeah. Oh, okay. Instead of all this uh, wastage. Mm. All right. Thank you so much, Ojo Michael from Abuja. Your point is very well taken. So, now still on top of this matter, and then, okay, let me ask you directly: Are you for or against parliamentary system of government? I'm not. I'm not for. I'm not for. I'm against parliamentary system of government. That's not what we need. What we need now is the devolution of powers. Okay. And uh, we cannot be waiting for federal rule to be done by federal governments in you know, Oyo State and in Anambra. If you look at um, federal Ministry of Works. When Fashola was minister, he had to actually thought outside the box, so cook bond. Mm. The ministry has about over three or four trillion projects. And every year they'll be budgeting 200 billion, 150 billion, 400 billion. They will now be doing palliatives. A FEMA will now be patching roads. So if you are now actually hands off about federal road, like we have in the university, we have state university and federal university, we should not have nothing like federal road again. Like they are coming up with state policy now then more money to be given to the state. So I will know where to go to. The same thing, the, the exclusive list, residual list, you understand? So the concurrent list, they should move those things from exclusive list to concurrent list. Okay. Look at what we are battling with electricity now. Ah, and now they say no subsidy again. Yes, it's because 1.3 trillion naira, and they are budgeting 450 billion. The Minister of Power, Adelabu, was being sincere during the media press briefing. He was being sincere that we can no longer lie to our people. The rot in power sector is, is another episode for another day. Mm. So for the man, the minister, to have actually came out and actually explained to us, for we to know what is actually obtainable in that ministry, kudos to Bayo Adelabu, the minister for power. He has tried his best in that regard to let us know. He's not saying we should remove subsidy. He's saying the government is not funding. So government some, sometimes, all, with all due respect, they don't come out true pictures. Are you, are you are you saying that the minister has actually tried his best because these days it looks like the uh, national grid even falls even more than what we can it count it will be so it will be so national grid will always be for because we are not we don't have anything on ground it's just like you are telling me that oh you and i we are going to local jail and i don't have fuel in the car by the time we get to beggar the car just stop and I say, ah, are you sure this car is okay because the reality is there is no fuel that will take us to local jail all right so nigeria is it, we have gas supply problem we have gas supply problem. The national, they will fall. This course, people are generating Mambila power project tw over 20 years ago. The, the minister in charge of that at that time was being dragged to EFCC, mm. sentenced to, I mean, detained at the Kujay prison. So what are we now talking about? Of essence to some of us is, Mr. President in particular should sit up. The basics, the food, 
the welfare of the people is very, very important. All right. And security of lives and property. All right. Anything less that we are just fooling ourselves in the cons. All right, uh, our time is fast spent. So many things we can actually talk about, but then if you can help us in just one minute. Mm -hmm. Guardian newspaper says Soware to sue damages as federal government withdraws treason charge. So in my mind, I'm just thinking for him, oh, uh, finally they've let you go. You sure you will not just yeah. go like that, JJ? Well, he has fundamental human right to do so. <laughs> if the federal government was being serious, and I think uh, this should be a big minus, on the part of government and uh, when Malami was doing so, he was he is a senior advocate of Nigeria. You can't just mess up offices. Uh, if you know you don't have any reason to have actually be charging somebody for treason. So why are you taking him to court? Now if you should arrest sue federal government for damages, they will use taxpayers' money and pay him. So it does not make any sense. I mean I cannot blame Shore. He has fundamental right to sue for the, for the federal government. Maybe because Shore is actually a, a, a voice in the country. So many people are being harassed daily mm. by policemen, by soldiers. Somebody is a suspect. You have started beating him, I mean, dragging him, shooting him. It's not, you call it's him not a suspect. A suspect. He's a suspect. You don't have any right to actually attack him or anything. Mm. So far, the guy is harmless. So, Shore should go ahead and sue the federal government. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Without Aziz Fatai Adeshokon, journalist, it's been a wonderful time having this. Thanks for having you. me. God bless our country God. and lead our leaders' rights. Most definitely. That's a very <laughs> fine way to anchor this segment of the show.